Hello, my name is Patrick Usher and I am an MECFS patient and in this video I'm going to be talking all about microclots, what they are, uh, what kind of symptoms they create, how you might know if you have them. Now microclots are something that have been identified in long COVID and also in MECFS and this comes out of uh, some real trailblazing research by the likes of Professor Richard Pretorius in South Africa and Dr. Beata Jaeger in Germany. And it would seem that the microclotting uh, pathophysiology can explain a significant aspect, though by no means all, uh, of illnesses like long COVID and MECFS. So what is a microclot? Well, of course, the clue is in the name. These are microscopic clots. You see them under a microscope. They're not like normal clots, which can be quite large and actually block off you know, blood flow to your brain completely and, you know, kill you and that kind of thing, or give you a stroke. These are not the same kinds of clots. They're a different phenomenon. They are microscopic. And in this case, they are really created by core illness pathways within MECFS and long COVID. So because these conditions are in various ways quite inflammatory, they can upregulate clotting pathways within the body. And so the body starts to actually create these tiny clots itself. And some people say, for example, that when you crash, when you're in post-exertional malaise, that situation is so inflammatory that the clotting pathways will be upregulated. Other people say that the general flight or fight, excessive sympathetic state of the nervous system can also upregulate these clotting pathways. But regardless of that, basically it is the illness itself that creates these little clots. And therefore from that, we can already say that these little microscopic clots are not the primary cause of these sorts of illnesses. They are a secondary dysfunction. They are created by the pathways of the illness itself. Now, does that mean that it's not important to treat these just because they might not be the primary cause? Of course not. If you can relieve uh, someone's body of a secondary dysfunction and really help the body to function better, then that is far more likely to help other aspects of the body to heal. And I think personally, this is very key with illnesses like MECFS and long COVID. What are the key physiological burdens in any given patient? And can you remove those burdens, thereby relaxing the rest of the body, giving it permission to get better, improve its function? And so I think uh, just because these things are secondary doesn't mean that treating them isn't very important. So in a moment, we'll get into the kind of symptoms that microclots might create. But first of all, I want to deal with the question of how do you know if you actually have these microclots? Well, of course, if you have MECFS and long COVID, it's quite likely that you do. Although some people with these conditions don't particularly have this phenomenon. But unfortunately, the bad news is that there aren't really available um, on any kind of widespread level uh, testing for these issues at the moment. If you want, you can fly out to South Africa and go and see uh, Professor Pretorius or one of her colleagues because they have the testing capacity there. And they do hope, I believe, for this to be rolled out more widely. But, you know, as with anything to do with MECFS, long COVID and the mainstream medical profession, don't hold your breath. You can also fly to certain clinics in Germany, including where Dr. Beata Jaeger is. I believe she's setting up a new clinic now in Bad Eibling. Eibling. Don't know any Germans out there can correct me on that. But I believe she also has the means to test these, uh, to test for the existence of the microclotting. But in general, if you go to your doctor and you say, look, I really want, I've, I've got MECFS, I've got long COVID. I want to test for these microclots. First of all, they'll have no idea what you're talking about. Um, and secondly, they won't be able to test for them because the standard clotting tests, while they may give hints, won't really pick up this phenomenon. So how do you actually know otherwise whether this applies to you? Let's say you don't want to jet off to Germany or South Africa. Well, luckily enough, there are ways of Let's just say the body gives you certain hints. And the big hint relates to the title of this video is that your blood becomes darker. Now that sounds pretty strange, but it is a distinct phenomenon. When 
anything, any substance is condensed. It becomes darker in color. And when you have a lot of microclots in your blood, they condense the blood, they make it thicker. And because they make it thicker, they make it darker. So how do you actually detect this? Well, it wouldn't be, for example, taking a little, you know, little finger prick test and looking at the color of the blood that comes out there. That would be bright red. The, the best um, way to, to discern this is when you get a typical blood draw you know, for testing various markers. So one out of the arm into a tube, what is the color of the blood in the tube? Is it a normal maroon kind of burgundy red, which is what we would expect to see in that case, or is it looking dark purple or even black? Now, let me show you a picture of black blood that is heavily microclotted. So here you are, this is in fact an MECFS patient. They have a, um, you know, whatever you call it, catheter thing in their arm, and you see some of the blood coming out. And as you can detect, this blood is extremely dark and it is essentially black because of the amount of microclotting. So to anyone who says there are no physical signs of MECFS or long COVID, Show them that picture, because there is a physical sign. You cannot psychosomatize your way into having dark blood. It's not physiologically possible. No matter what any doctor might tell you, any disbelieving doctor, it's not possible. So there is a distinct sign. Similarly, the color of your fingernails, because through your fingernails you get um, a sense of the color of your blood. So even if you're not going to get a blood draw, what color are your fingernails? Are they looking dark purple? Let me show you a picture of the fingernails of an MECFS patient with microclotted blood. So in this case, you can see, for example, the fifth finger is very dark, the fourth finger is dark, third finger is dark. Now, there is also a very helpful questionnaire online, which has been devised specifically for long COVID and MECFS patients to detect um, whether they may or may not have microclotting regardless of uh, any actual blood tests. And so I'm going to link that down below. So if you want to explore this more for yourself, have a look at that questionnaire and you can perhaps detect whether this problem applies to you. Of course, as with so many things, this issue operates on a spectrum of severity. Now, the pictures that I showed you there were from someone with very microclotted blood. I mean, you know, that's, that blood is black. Um, but it may be the case that the blood is more purple, uh, dark purple. So now let's talk about what kind of symptoms the microclots will create in MECFS and long COVID. And the key big idea to understand, and, and if you get this, you really understand, you know, the nature of this phenomenon. The Blood saturation, oxygen saturation, will almost certainly be remaining normal unless there's some other issue. So if you have one of those oxygen saturation devices, the microclotting will not be affecting the presence of oxygen in the bloodstream. However, they will be affecting the transfer of oxygen from the bloodstream to everywhere else in the body. And the transfer of oxygen can be measured with something called a venous oxygen saturation test, which to the best of my knowledge needs to be done in hospital. Now, why do these microclots impact the transfer of oxygen? Well, think about it. They're, they're filling up the blood. They're clotting the blood. The blood is becoming thick, really sluggish. It's hard, therefore, to, for the circulation to be uh, fluid and to really you know, seep into uh, areas of the body more easily. There's something called the microcirculation. There's whole areas of your body where in order for the blood to get into, it has to pass through very small blood vessels. They're called arterioles. And uh, if the blood has become very thick, then it can't actually get into those areas of the microcirculation. So they actually start to get kind of cut off. So it's areas of the circulation that are more peripheral in the body 
that uh, will be most affected by this issue. So, for example, you know, let's say you develop ME-CFS long COVID, you become very pale because the areas of the microcirculation in your cheeks, they're not, they're no longer, the blood, is no, the blood is no longer getting in there. So, the other thing is that the microclots can also attach themselves to the, the lining of the blood vessels called the endothelium. And when they're attached there, they also inhibit the transfer of blood and therefore oxygen into other aspects of the body. And so what you end up with is, is at a global level throughout the body, something called tissue hypoxia. So a, a, a reduction in oxygen supply into the tissues. So let's think, what kind of symptoms is that going to create? Well, exercise intolerance will of course be um, created from this. If your muscles are not able to receive an adequate oxygen supply once you want to use them, well, they're going to give up pretty quickly, thereby triggering post-exertional malaise. If your brain isn't receiving oxygen in the way that it needs, you're going to have cognitive dysfunction, brain fog, and all kinds of difficulties with memory and so on and so forth. You may have breathlessness because your lungs are also struggling in this situation. You may have pressure in the chest. Of course, that can be caused by many reasons, but this is also something that could be caused by microclotting. And just generally, a sensation that blood isn't kind of getting in. Things aren't flowing in the body. They're not flowing. Things are feeling stuck in terms of the circulation. So those are some of the symptoms that microclotting can create. Of course, it's very important to emphasize this is but one aspect of the pathophysiology of ME-CFS and long COVID. There are so many aspects and other things can create exactly the same or very similar symptoms. So this is just one part. So don't go away thinking microclotting is the answer to absolutely everything to do with these illnesses. It is not. But nevertheless, these are the kind of symptoms that one would expect to be caused by this problem. So what about ways of actually improving microclotting? Well, I'm going to have another video talking about uh, medication strategies, supplement strategies and more invasive procedures, one might say, or more substantive procedures that address this problem. So do watch out for that. But what I will say is do watch out for the very next video on this channel where I'm going to be talking about my own journey to Germany on my own last year in order to get the blood washing procedure known as HELP apheresis, heparin extracorporeal lipoprotein slash fibrinogen precipitation apheresis, a blood washing procedure where your blood gets put into a filter, the clots are washed out and the, and the washed blood is put back into the other arm. I had seven such procedures in Germany last year and it significantly helped me with this problem. Here you can see me in a picture where I was having my very first treatment. And so I need to tell you now that the person who had that very black blood, that's my blood, or rather that was my blood. Because what I saw over those seven treatments in front of my very eyes was my blood becoming lighter and lighter and lighter until eventually at the end of the seventh treatment my blood was a normal maroon burgundy colour again. Um, so I want to tell you all about my experience in Germany, all about the help apheresis procedures in the next video, uh, so do watch out for that. Okay, so that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave questions, comments, suggestions for future videos. Check out the links below. I have a free book there, A Medical Hypothesis, that I have written about the causes of thirst in ME-CFS, POTS, Long COVID, as well as uh, details about my consultations service. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video and engaging with you in the comments.